Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this live 26th day of August transmission. We are going to be here for the next three hours broadcasting worldwide. There has obviously been a dramatic, horrifying uh, murder caught in Virginia on a live TV feed of a reporter and a cameraman uh, by a disgruntled employee or former employee who had been involved in racism lawsuits at another TV station in Florida. We have the research up on Infowars.com. He has now reportedly just committed suicide in the last 10 minutes. He goes by the name uh, Bryce Williams, but his real name is Vester Flanagan, and he reportedly, the police say, uh, turned the gun on himself after a dramatic chase. This is just like the Charleston shooting that killed nine people where a racist, whacked out white person who thought a race war was beginning and was trying to start a race war, helter-skelter style, went in and killed those people. Uh, this gentleman says that there was racism at this TV station because he hadn't been promoted. Uh, he has been tweeting that out. And uh, he wanted to be an anchor on TV. I mean, the guy looks completely whacked out. He doesn't look like he could be a janitor at a TV station, uh, much less a anchor at a TV station. And I'm just telling you that as a TV radio guy, he looks completely out of his mind in his uh, Twitter photos and stuff from weeks ago. And he shot these people on live television. Now, we have footage that Fox, CNN, and others aren't showing. I'm going to play it here because this is a culture loves violence. Well, uh, it's nothing compared to shoot 'em up games. And he shot this footage, I guess, wanting to be famous, with his cell phone, I guess an iPhone or Droid, in first person, point of view, with the gun out in front of him, just like the video game Doom, developed by the Pentagon to get people to dehumanize folks and shoot them. I'm not demonizing video games, I'm just saying that's what this culture is. And so many times these people are obsessed with shoot 'em up video games. Turns out the guy from the Charleston situation was almost all the mass shooters. They're almost always on psychotropics or amnesics, which we predicted with the Charleston situation. Turned out he was. If this guy wasn't seeing a psychologist or psychiatrist, I'll eat my hat. Uh, it's all it takes to get rid of the inhibition and send people uh, over the edge in a big, big way. So we are going to be breaking all of this down but right now, let's go to the footage that he was uploading live to Twitter. They've taken down the Twitter account, but we've saved all of his tweets. Uh, one of his last tweets was, Allison made racist comments. Uh, and EEOC filed a report. So he filed a report with the EEOC that will uh, try to find a business uh, for turning the lights on. I mean, it's an unbelievable organization, in my view, unconstitutional. But don't worry, he filed it with them, and uh, he was exposing her, her, her racism. And now, uh, how is the controlled left on CNN, MSNBC, that's been pushing organizations and groups saying, kill the cops, kill the white people, all these tweets we reported on, thousands of folks saying, time to start killing crackers. And don't worry, crackers are getting shot, they're getting beat up, they're getting killed, they're getting robbed, they're getting beat up in church. It's okay because they're white. So will this be defended? That he says she was racist, no judge, no jury. She gets executed, so does the, so does the cameraman. Because they're trying to blame the Second Amendment right now. This is the next big push. But they've got a problem, a big problem. Because this guy is basically a creation and was guaranteed pushed over the edge by the mainstream media inciting all of this. I mean, they're guilty. Well, this morning when the news came out just a few hours ago that there had been a tragic shooting on live television, the first thing I thought was disgruntled employee on a serotonin reuptake inhibitor or similar drug. Only reason is, is that most of the time it's a disgruntled employee. And almost all the time, whether it's disgruntled or not, they're on some type of psychotropic drug where the inserts say it can make you do this. You'll have a thought when you're a normal person and think that's a crazy thought. You'll have it when you're on these drugs and think that's an imperative to go out and do it. 
But another wrinkle was added. I knew that the system, the controlled media would come out and apply guilt to all gun owners. Almost 200 million people now. It's over 170 million. More people are buying guns all the time. It's causing crime rates to go down across the nation, except for areas where guns have been restricted. And the crime rates are exploding there. We've got a report Rob News putting together with all the official Justice Department graphs, the latest numbers to show that and prove that. As the economy degenerates, though, crime is going to naturally go up. That's why having guns and security and locking your doors and having neighborhood watch and basic things like that are going to be more important than ever uh, in this climate. And then he started tweeting live until he killed himself about 15 minutes ago. As of airtime, 1110 Central, he killed himself about 5 to 11 Central Time, 5 to noon Eastern Time. After the police had chased him and uh, cornered him, he went by Bryce Williams. Paul Watson's done the research, found that years ago, more than a decade ago, he sued a TV station he worked for uh, in Florida. And, and then now we're digging up more intel that this is just the same MO. Every TV station, he went to EEOC filings. Everyone's racist. Everyone's out to get him. Um, I've been looking at photos and videos of him. Whacked out of his mind. Not hired to be a reporter, not hired to be anchor, but wanting to be an anchor, wanting to be a reporter. Gets on psychotropic drugs, you know that's coming out. Just You can guarantee it, just like I said with the Charleston shooting. That hasn't been established yet, but I bet money within two days. Bet money, and I've never seen it not be. Because that, that's the added, people don't do this normally. White, black, we're all the same, this is what you do when you're on these things. And then you got MSNBC, CNN, and the thousands of tweets Paul's reported on per article, where it's kill whites, let's start killing, let's beat them up, let's shoot them, let's go in their neighborhoods, let's burn down their houses, let's kill cops. MSNBC having guests on that say, deck the halls with dead cops, fa la 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 la. These are Soros funded groups led by Nancy Pelosi's uh, top staffer, Hillary Clinton's involved. Does that mean there aren't some out-of-control cops and some problems? Absolutely. But the answer is don't go out and just randomly shoot cops. The answer isn't just go out and randomly some ladies at a Catholic church going to pray for her mom you know, who's dying. And so, hey, a white lady went in that church. Nobody's in there. It's open. Let's go beat her up and rob her because she's white. Because it's okay because she's white. It's like the Klan. Let's go lynch this black person and rob them because they're black. They deserve it. It's the same gang mentality. So you had Charleston, which was fully blamed on the Second Amendment, and then the guilt was applied to white people in general, and you had all these black organizations and groups saying it's time to start killing whites. And then I said, if this starts getting triggered, you're going to have other unstable, mentally ill black people go out and kill white people, and then other mentally unstable white people are going to go out and start killing black people. And then if it really starts kicking off, you're going to get a full-bore shooting war in this country. And there's going to be dead people all over the place, chief amongst them the police. And that will be the destabilization the feds use to come in and fully federalize, which is what Obama told his cousin Odinga, the Muslim leader, when he lost the presidency of Kenya. He said, have people go out and riot and start burning stuff. And Odinga did it for two months, and they gave him the prime ministership, created a new level of government, basically co-president, and did the Muslims, the radical Islamists, stop then? No, they started attacking malls, police stations, all of it. I mean, these people know what they're doing. And I'm not saying it's a Muslim takeover here. I'm saying when George Soros spends over $100 million, $33 million in Ferguson alone, to stir up and to try to get a race war going, and MSNBC and CNN and others promote it like it's normal and good. They plan on doing this. They hope Charleston, when Dylan Roof, the drugged out of his mind on amnesics from his psychiatrist, amnesics, folks, that's what Sirhan Sirhan was on. I'm not saying this is staged, but it's staged in that you're just giving people. It'd be like if you went and gave a bunch of high school kids in the prom punch PCP. 
you, you're not going to order some of them to drive off cliffs or cut their arms off or murder people. But you basically did it knowing statistically you give 500 people at a prom, PCP, there's going to be probably 20, 30 deaths that night. It's the same thing. You put 20% of the U.S. public on psychotropics and other hardcore drugs, you're going to have side effects in a percentage of them, and it's not going to be pretty. They're suicide mass murder pills. That's what you blame. As I told Piers Morgan two, three years ago, they were going to have me three segments, and they came in and said, sponsors, sponsors. And I know that meant don't attack the fact that they actually had Prozac-type drug ads on that very broadcast. And I said, Piers, you got Prozac-type ads on here. Stop blaming the Second Amendment for what's going on here. Almost every mass shooter is on them. And they're all locked out of their brains. You look at Adam Lanza, any of these puppets, the Batman shooter, James Holmes. You look at these people, white, black, I don't care. They're whacked out of their minds. You look at the new shooter. Let's, let's put this up on screen, this article. Virginia shooter who killed two journalists in live broadcast commits suicide report. You look at the photos of him, the same million-yard stare. That stare, I only see that in people who are whacked out of their brains on drugs. I see meth heads that look like that, too, who haven't slept properly in six months. And that's what is to blame here with a cocktail of media brainwashing. And by the way, I've told this story hundreds of times. I'll say it again. You can look it up in criminology. Until they put fences up, 20-foot fences, and walled in the Empire State's building, the, the World Trade Centers before they were destroyed in 91, 2001, excuse me. Every time someone jumped off and committed suicide... They'd have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people show up within an hour of the news reporting it to jump off so they'd station police there to stop them. The New York police are stationing police outside newsrooms across New York City right now because their criminology shows they'll probably have somebody try to go kill more reporters. And that's the thing about giving so much attention to mass shootings is the media knows that mentally ill people who would just commit suicide or would do suicide by cop, they'll think, no, I'll go kill somebody I don't like. Or I'll go shoot up a bunch of kids, and then you don't even have to have somebody in a government MK Ultra laboratory and have a mind control to go do it like Sirhan Sirhan. You simply put it out there with enough of a drugged out, suggestible, mesmerized, hypnotized population. And they're going to go out and they're going to commit these acts guaranteed. They've got metrics. They've got an analysis. And as the economy implodes, as society gets crazy, as things degenerate, you can bet all the tea in China that the world is going to get crazy. And, and, you know, we've had the great statistics that since 92, because of gun ownership increasing, and police forces expanding in size, they basically tripled. It's both those, but the, even the police groups admit it's the guns more than the police. Going out, crime rates have dropped 52%. Some estimates are over 60% using guns. Now, because of the economy imploding and the whole gang culture getting pushed across the board, I think you're going to see crime massively increase. I don't know if it'll be as bad as... The 80s, but this is the time to have guns to protect your family. This is the time to start legally and lawfully check your local laws to carry guns. This is the time not to go out and hate the police, but to try to get control of your local departments, get good people elected, good sheriffs in, good police chiefs in, for the community to work together, try to stabilize this nation. Because the globalists want to destabilize it. They want to get us at each other's throats. That is not the answer. The answer is to come together around the Bill of Rights, Constitution, due process, private property. And it's time for police who are getting evil orders, I know, in many departments, to just quietly do the right thing and help this country and not get into the globalist culture of being thugs or being paramilitary and to be true peace officers and to be honorable, honorable men and women. And I know most of you want to do that. So that's why I'm counting on you to do that, because 
This is a premeditated takedown of America and the rest of the world we're about to go into. And this guy shooting these white people because he was whacked out and racist doesn't need to cause any retaliation by